Okay, let's say we do the following experiment. Let's take a big bar magnet. Okay, bar magnet has a north and a south pole. And now let's take a uh, voltage source here. And let's make a little solenoid right here. Okay, and let's run some wires around this solenoid. And eventually coming back to our voltage source. Okay. So, if I run current through this thing, it's going to create a magnetic field. If the north pole of that magnetic field is facing this north pole, they're going to get pushed apart. If the south pole of that magnetic field that I generate is facing the north pole, they're going to get pulled together. And so if I alternate it, right, if I have a voltage source here that is oscillating, what's going to happen to this solenoid? It's going to go up, and it's going to go down, it's going to go up, and then it's going to go down. Okay. And if I attach that to a big cone and I turn this thing on, what have I just produced? What is this device? Anybody? This is a speaker. Okay. This is your speaker or loudspeaker, however you like to say it. Okay. This is your speaker cone in your stereo. If you open up that front cover, you can see the cone. There's usually a sort of round shape on the inside. And you can look in there and you can see where the wires attach to the cone. And then on the back side, there's a very powerful magnet. And you know this because if you take the speaker cone out and you stick it up on the fridge, it just sticks it, right? That magnet is very powerful. So when I run current through this thing, back and forth, it flips the direction of the B field in this solenoid back and forth, and the cone goes up and down, and it emits sound waves. Okay, so this is exactly how your speaker works. But let's say we reverse the process. Let's say we do the whole thing again. Okay, here's our solenoid. Anybody try my solenoid joke on your TAs? No? Try it, it's good for a hearty chuckle. How's your lab going? I'm solenoid. Let's say we do it again, but we're not going to drive the circuit, okay? We are actually going to blast it with sound waves coming in. Okay, instead of sound waves going out, we're going to blast it with sound waves coming in. If the sound wave hits this speaker cone, what happens? It pushes the speaker cone up and down just a little bit. Okay. Just like this one over here. And if that speaker cone gets pushed up and down a little bit, this coil is now closer or further from the magnetic field due to this bar magnet. And if there is a changing flux through the coil, then there is an EMF that is generated here. And so let's not label this V, let's label this EMF epsilon. Okay, and we know what that is. EMF epsilon is negative N delta phi over delta T. So now if you put a device here that can measure that EMF, that voltage, all of a sudden you can in fact record sound waves. Anybody know what this device is called? What have we created here? 
Maybe not the most efficient creation, but this is a microphone. Okay. But wait a minute, I just drew the exact same pictures, right? Am I saying that you could use this thing as a speaker, but you could also use it as a microphone? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. And that's kind of weird to think about, right? But if you just grab hold of your speaker and you start yelling into your speaker and you measure the voltage coming out, it will mimic your sound waves going in, okay? It's not gonna be the best, right? Real microphones like the lapel mic that I'm wearing right here are designed differently, but the idea is exactly the same. If you turn sound waves into voltages, it's a microphone. If you turn voltages into sound waves, it's a speaker. It's all the same reversible physics, which I think is pretty cool. So when you're stuck out there in the wilderness, you don't have a microphone, just grab your speaker. It'll work.